Welcome to Focus on the Falls. I'm John Merck here, joined by Caitlin Windler, the Director of Finance and Operations for the District, and David Munoz, the Superintendent of Schools in Menominee Falls. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having us. I want to start with you, David, about this topic. It's tough to understand for some people. It's critical. It's important. Take us inside budget time of year, why this is so important, and how you kind of dive into the important decisions the district needs to make when it comes to the budget. Yeah, budgeting really starts right after the annual meeting for the next year. Mm -hmm. So the complete cycle, really, we're just through it, and we're already starting on the next cycle. So the next annual meeting, which is next September, uh, August, September. So that cycle is started now, and we're just completing it. So there's a lot of information, a lot of communication and education about the process. So it's looking at the needs of the district, the wants of the district. Our student and our pupil count is a big part of things, um, which has been increasing for multiple years, um, which was helpful mm -hmm. in this year's budget. Um, there was a line item that way that was very beneficial uh, for the school district. So the timeline is almost continuous, right? You finish one and you're already working on the next budget, it's the big circle? Yeah, we have a great team and right after we get done with the annual meeting, there is a little bit of a break, <laughs> meaning they get to reset, start looking at Barrett budget models, which we've done already. Mm -hmm. So we had a fun day where, um, <laughs> you know, Caitlin set a meeting and we looked at projections for the next budget, meaning the 24-25, you know, and into the future. Um, and things look really good. So we have a great team led by Caitlin, um, you know, and uh, we're locked into those scenarios, mm -hmm. you know. Caitlin, I want to dive into the process a little bit before we talk about our budget. Has funding for school budgets substantially changed? I should ask you, how has it changed? Yeah, that's a great question. So schools are funded through the revenue limit formula, which started back in 1993. And that formula really is complex, but the simplified version of it is our resident membership times our per pupil amount equals our overall revenue limit calculation, which is the majority of our revenue within our school district. That per pupil amount is within the state statute in the state budget, biennial budget, how much that will increase or stay the same or decrease in the next two years. So that over time used to be connected to an inflation, an inflationary percent increase, and now it's a dollar amount. So we're seeing that struggle, the challenge there of being funded lower than inflation, but having to maintain programming and costs. So we're always looking at how can we streamline our budget, what are our priorities? We use the word priorities all the time, and this is part of the work into the strategic plan and making sure that our budget is reflective of our priorities. Have the changes been beneficial for districts like Menominee Falls, or have they been more challenging? I would say challenging is probably the right word. Um, over the last biennial budget, so the last two years, our school districts in the state of Wisconsin received zero dollar per pupil increases. That is because the state legislator kind of swapped um, ESSER funding or federal COVID relief funding with that per pupil amount. So in this next biennial budget, which we're just finishing the first year into the second year planning now for through the biennial budget, schools are receiving a $325 per pupil increase, which is more than the past, but doesn't make up for the two years of $0 increases. So that's where we're seeing that challenge met with at the same time inflation through the roof that's kind of unheard of from the last right. decade um, and balancing that in order to present a balanced budget. So David, how do you balance what a district wants to do? Because there's lots of cool ideas you have and mm -hmm. cool things you want to do versus what you're able to do because of the realities of the funding formula or the realities of the dollars that come into a district. It's, is it a constant balancing act? Well, students are at the center. Uh, we make sure that students are at the center of all of our decisions. I know that's a big key to what Caitlin does in her department, what we do as a district as a whole, is we're going to look at the needs of the students. Like right now we're looking at English language arts curriculum. That's a, it's a core move, it's a core need throughout the district, along with some social studies changes as well. So that focus and some of those dollars are being pushed heavily into their school safety and school security that we would love for to be educators first, but we need to have the safety and security be a paramount part, so we have put uh, increased school resource officers from two to three just this year. Uh, with, we have a wonderful relationship with the Menominee Falls the Police Department, mm -hmm. but then we've also increased the level of safety in each of our buildings, especially the high school and the middle school, uh, with increased number of cameras and monitoring locations 
that are being installed as we speak and be going online over the course of this year. So we're excited about those things. That's how we look at prioritizing needs of the students, obviously staff safety as well. Um, and then after that, I mean, there's some bigger priorities that, that we have as a district infrastructure, building maintenance. We spend about $675,000 a year just on maintenance and upkeep alone. Um, we had mentioned before we started taping that there was just an approval last night to put a new chiller in the middle school, mm -hmm. which was an absolute need. Uh, Not know. sexy, but very, very, very <laughs> needed. Yeah, it's a 20 year, it, it had a 20 year lifespan and we were beyond the 20 yeah. years. The parts weren't even available anymore. So that'll be a project the board did approve last night and that'll be put in this summer. Caitlin, what are some of the biggest categories when you look at our budget, where our money ends up going? That's a great question. About 70 or 75 percent of our budget goes to wages and benefits. So that's salaries, that's our hourly staff, that's every portion of our staff population. And then we have health insurance, we have retirement, we have Social Security and Medicare, all those normal pieces too. So about 70, 75 percent of our budget is made up of staff. Another big portion, especially this year in our area school districts are seeing a big increase in transportation expenses. So transportation is a large cost for us. Um, and then you've got your utility costs, things that we normally see in our own homes. Um, we have our own business insurance. So those pieces too, property, workers comp, those are all pieces that are increasing while our revenue isn't increasing at the same rate. So those are those are some of those larger categories within our budget. And you hit on this. I wanted to ask you about inflation because I think... <laughs> I keep talking about it, right? Right. And we all feel it in the grocery store. You know, you fill your cart up and you spend a hundred bucks now and you can still see the bottom of the grocery cart. Mm -hmm. it, nothing goes as far as it used to. How is the district impacted by inflation? The same way that you are at home. So we're seeing, and a large part of our, in our job is that salaries piece. So I talked about how inflation you know, is going up and our, we tr our, one of our main goals is to stay competitive with our area school district. So we're making sure that we're at market rate for our wages. We did some adjustments in a few years ago with our educational assistance, um, but we have to make sure we're competitive and maintaining that as a priority as well, balancing that with um, other cost increases. Retention, David, is important. You want to keep your best people. And I always say to my team at where, where I work that one of the primary ways you're rewarded, not the only way, is how much you're paid because the culture can be great and everything else can be great, but it's how you're paid and how you can take care of your family. When we talk about the budget, how difficult is it when inflation is roaring out of control and it's a competitive workers environment to make sure you retain and keep your best people? Yeah, we're excited about some, uh, some things that we put into this new budget, the current budget that was approved by the community and the board um, just recently, including for the first time extended benefits for some of our support staff that never, never existed before. And, and we're excited to do that, and we know that's a, a positive step for, that the district has made with our staff, but we know there's more that we need to do in that regard. We were able to give increases last year uh, for our staff. We are projecting increases again for this year, uh, and we're, we're budgeting in that way, looking at CPI, uh, which is coming down, thankfully. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the consumer price index is coming down, uh, from the high of you yeah. know, mm -hmm. seven, eight, nine, ten percent, wherever it was sitting at and fluctuating yeah. uh, for so many years. But those expenses, those are real uh, for the district, just that they are at home for everybody else. Um, I'll give you an example with the chiller last night mm -hmm. that we probably had to pay, we had budgeted between five and six hundred thousand ballpark years ago initially when we knew it was mm -hmm. coming to the end of its life. We're going to pay double that just based on wow. the cost of materials and, and the cost of workmanship. Yeah. Uh, and that's just the nature of things right now. And um, we have to account for those things. And there's a direct effect on how much we have left uh, for the 70 to 75 percent of the pie, which we do have of all of our resources that does already go to staff uh, salaries and benefits. So, Caitlin, when I get my tax bill, it's the biggest portion of my tax bill is what goes to the school district. And I'm happy to pay that because we need to take care of our kids. We need to take care of our teachers. Can you walk through the tax bill and Absolutely. what people will see? Yeah, so the first thing I'll point out is you'll see multiple taxing jurisdictions. So the school district, as you reference, is only one of those yeah. taxing jurisdictions. So in Menominee Falls, you'll see the County of Waukesha, Waukesha County Technical College, you'll see the village, and you'll see the school district. Another piece you'll see on there is the school levy tax credit. So that piece has always been on there, but this year it's a credit back 
to the taxpayers, which is going to be a bigger line item than in years past, which is a good thing. It's a credit, it's money back to the homeowners. So you'll see those different pieces. Um, the state in the state budget, and I'm, I'm not getting to some of those glossary of terms, right, that yeah, we talk about in school of finance, but yeah. um, the state can put money in any different number of buckets, if you will, for funding. Normally, the state in the past has put money into that equalization aid formula, which basically lowers the tax levy and therefore the mill rate for our homeowners. This year, the state legislator decided to put more money into that school levy tax credit line item on the property tax bill. So while the mill rate you know, could have been lower if the dollars were within the equalization aid formula, instead they're in that tax, cre tax levy credit line item and they really function the same way. So they basically reduce what the homeowner will pay on behalf of the, for the school district. Is it a challenge when you live in a district where keeping taxes low is the primary focus? I mean, our elected officials run and get elected based on keeping taxes low, and I want my taxes low too, right? We all want as much money in our pocket as possible. Does it make it a challenge when the driving force every single year is, I don't want to pay any more than I have to? It's part of the nature of the beast, and honestly, part of our work is to be transparent and have these conversations early and throughout the year. So we talk a lot in our board finance committee meeting and at our full board meetings about this along the way to look at what are our early projections. There are some factors we can control and there are some factors we can't control. So um, we talked about resident membership being one of those key pieces of the revenue limit formula and that will drive up our overall revenue, which could drive up our overall tax levy. So some of those pieces work in a separate way outside of our control. Um, and. We just try to be as transparent as possible with our board, with our community, and with our staff in projecting what that's going to look like for our community. David, when we talk about budgeting and numbers in a district, how critical is the component of headcount? How important is it that, how much easier does it become if a district is growing? Yeah, we saw a difference in hundreds of thousands of dollars this year of increased um, revenue because of our, our increases over the last three years. So. That sort of thing is, is one of the central points. It's not everything, but it's a huge driving mm -hmm. point because about 75% of all the districts, there's about 400 plus districts in the state, about 75% of them are declining enrollment. Mm -hmm. And the revenue limit formula is not constructed for declining enrollment districts. Mm -hmm. It is not. It, it actually very much is a negative and a drag mm -hmm. on a, a declining enrollment district. So while it's not something, you know, we're pretty landlocked, Right. In terms of the school district Menominee Falls, um, we're excited about some, some things on the horizon with open enrollment that we're working on, um, some policy changes uh, to look at you know, our resident membership. Uh, but there are some pieces like that that that's an important, that's a driving number. Is budget time of year, well, it's all year basically, mm -hmm. but when it really comes to crunch time and talking about the budget. Is it a fun time of year for you? I know you like to be in the buildings, you like to be in the school, or is it more work and something we just need to get through? Yeah, I have a lot of fun with the budget. I mean, I'm, I'm knowledgeable about it. We have a great team that's focused on it. Um, they know that I'm connected to it mm -hmm. uniquely. Um, I have a very good working knowledge of it um, to, to make sure that we're maximizing the students at the center of it with safety, um, and they believe that as well. Our, our finance team is, is deeply committed to those things as well. Um, and you can see that with, with how the district is progressing this year. We're excited about it. Caitlin, talk about the collaboration that takes place with the superintendent's office, with people in our community mm -hmm. who want to weigh in and have a voice. Absolutely. The collaboration that goes into the budget process. Yeah, the collaboration is the number one word I would use in what the budget is. I kind of think of my role as guiding it with all the collaboration that comes into place. So. We work as an administrative team, as a cabinet team, as a leadership team with our principals to understand what are our priorities. We've talked a lot about English language arts as our district priority and moving forward. So making sure that our budget aligns with those re and we're aligning those resources within our budget to the, those priorities. We then move to our board finance committee meetings and have those conversations, the same conversations about here's what our administration is working on and when we're looking at our priorities within our strategic plan. And then we move to our full board and we have our community input as well within our board meetings. We have our annual meeting, which is a very important part of the community process in order to actually take a vote on what that budget is going to be for that coming year. How do people, David, get more information if they'd like to find out more about the budget? Uh, it's a great, there's a great website. Mm -hmm. um, just go to the website, go to the business office on the website, um, and everything's listed there. The detailed budget, the detailed workout from every budget. 
um, even approvals from last night's checkbook, like I think mm -hmm. it was one point whatever million you know, that was approved by the board last night. You can see line items of where all the money is going. So, so the district website, check it out. There's resources there. Absolutely. David Munoz is the superintendent in Menominee Falls, and Caitlin Windler is the director of finance and operations. Important topic. Thank you so much for helping us understand Absolutely. it a little better. Thank you.